Hello, I'm Dr. Frank Palermo. I'm a physiatrist specializing in neuro rehab. That's brain rehabilitation. So in today's module, we are going to discuss the basics of EEG and cortical P300 evoked responses in the brain. This is a new, fast technique to evaluate brain physiology for the purpose of most of our physiology testing that's relevant for many of our rehab patients. It only takes five minutes to set up, five minutes to run the test, and the computer will instantly give you the data, simultaneously scrubbing all the artifact out. So this is a whole new paradigm uh, thanks to advanced uh, technology, advanced computer science, and uh, more powerful algorithms. So, EEG and cortical P300. Why do we do this? Our patients come to us with some deficit, some problem. It would be very nice to be able to show them objective evidence of what their brain is capable of doing and what their brain unfortunately is not doing at this time. So we can show this with the EEG coupled with P300 cortical evoked response. So you demonstrate to yourself and to the patient as well as the family that the problem exists, we have a baseline, and then we can have uh, our best interventions uh, applied to the patient. And as they progress forward, you can see the functional improvement in the patient, but then there's going to be a time when you're wondering, did I plateau? Did they max out? Or are they not responding? I mean, maybe you have the wrong medication or uh, they just can't handle the therapy levels. You can then apply, reapply the EEG analysis with the uh, P300 and then determine from an objective standpoint if you're making the proper progress. So uh, what is this EEG and P300 uh, technology? The brain puts out oscillations. It's an electric field that moves back and forth continually. We talk about alpha rhythms in the brain. That's 10 times per second. You can have a variety of brain activity uh, speeds from three times a second when we're sleeping to 50 times when we're uh, highly uh, anxious. But for the most part, we hang in the uh, about 10 to 15 uh, uh, beats per second or repetitions per second uh, activity. Now, you apply a system, which is in a, a new but very easy to apply EEG headset. Once you get the headset in place, the computer with better an, uh, algorithms is able to uh, make sure that everything is in sync and then you run a polygraph. The polygraph means that each one of the electrodes is putting is detecting electrical activity from below and display it on the screen. The screen is about two seconds long, but it's basically a video and you can run it for a half an hour if you'd like. For the most part, we run it for about anywhere from five to uh, 20 minutes just to make sure that we have the, enough data. But Furthermore, the computer is able to analyze small epochs, small uh, areas uh, in time of about one half a second. And if you apply a tone to the headphones, now you can see the patient has a headphone on, tones are going into the patient's ear, it's being processed by the brain, and when the patient hears the odd tone, that's when the brain, as well as the uh, trigger, uh, responds. And so um, the, the computer will analyze these. They'll put out a, uh, an EEG analysis called the P300 at about 300 milliseconds after the tone is elicited. And at about 300 milliseconds, the brain has made its decision. But in the meantime, it is processed back and forth, left, right, front, and back, and up and down approximately 10 or 15 times before it makes the decision. So you can hear a sound, you can move, and then later you say, I knew what that was. That's your brain catching up to 
movement. Now, when we have patients uh, listen to these tones, uh, we also have them press a mouse, and they will always press the mouse button before their brain registers what they heard. So the sound comes in. If the sound is your target sound, we call that the odd tone, you will get that P300 uh, uh, wave on the computer. However, um, if the tone is not the target tone, the brain will ignore it. And that's proper brain processing. Now, the faster it processes at 300, the better you are. The more profound or the deeper the amplitude is, the stronger your brain is. So you're paying attention, your brain is working properly, and we can detect this. If you have a concussion, the brain will not process properly. If you have a metabolic problem, if you have uh, severe depression, if you have anxiety, if you have some attention deficits, we can look at other parameters and make a determination as to whether or not you need therapy or, need, or you need to uh, uh, you know, take medication or even just get your uh, life balance back. So I showed you the picture of the P300, but brain processes are very, very fast. So it only takes approximately uh, 20 milliseconds, not 300 milliseconds, but 20 milliseconds for the brain to process from one side to the other. Then it makes a connection, as you can see up on the upper left where it shows a cortical synapse. That may take another couple of milliseconds. All right, so now we're up to maybe 25 milliseconds. And then it shoots back across the other side and says, is that what you intended to hear? Yes, it is. And then it shoots back again, another 25 milliseconds. And it keeps going back and forth and forward and back and up and down. And these nerve clusters will then somehow reach a threshold and say, we got it. That's what we're expecting to hear. And the lower centers of your brain, this thalamus, then sends signals to all the different parts of the cortex and the EEG will pick that signal up and it's displayed and we call it a P300 because it's positive and it is uh, at 300 milliseconds. This is reproducible, this is physiology. Now, that's great for the practitioner. You have a graph and the patient doesn't really understand it too well. So what we can do is take each one of those electrodes, change the electrical amplitude in the graph into a color that's determined by a spectrum. So in this case, the spectrum is between two and 14 microvolts. So if it's red, it's up at 14. If it's yellow, it's probably at 10. And if it's dark blue, it's down in the two range. Two range doesn't sound very good to me. You'll still get a P300 spike, but it's not very profound. So therefore, uh, you get this baseline. And now again, the patient's coming to you for a reason. So you say, this is your baseline. We are going to have interventions. Hopefully, the interventions will be successful enough to actually increase your amplitude, therefore your color will change, and your speed will probably also change. Now, this presentation here is a preseason evaluation of a football player at the University of Colorado, and then a day after he had a concussion, you can see that the um, uh, amplitudes have all dropped you know, precipitously. Show this to the football player and say, hey, look, your brain's not as functioning, functioning as well as it had been. Clearly, rest, do all the things that we recommend, and then we will reevaluate you before you pass all the guidelines and return to play. Balance is improved, no headaches uh, and such. Uh, they think that they can process properly. We retested all of them, and for the most part, 70% showed that their brain had mostly recovered, uh, 
small decrement, but insignificant, and they were able to return to play. At the end of the season, we did the same thing. And so you can see clearly from a football standpoint what your brain or how your brain changes also it doesn't matter. It can be a stroke. It can be a uh, brain injury. It can be uh, marked depression. It can be PTSD. All of these things will show markers, which are amplitudes of voltage as well as speed of processing. And therefore, you get the patient's attention. You have a, uh, a very strong physiologic basis for uh, moving forward with your patient, and then when you think that they've uh, made the pro progress you hope for, you retest them. It's very easy to retest, it's not very expensive, and it doesn't take a lot of time. If you get the progress physiologically in the brain, great. If you see the same progress in the patient's function, excellent. If, however, you get this dilemma that we see all the time in rehabilitation where the patient is making progress to some degree, but it's not enough. They're not getting to where they want to be. You retest their brain again, and if the brain has advanced uh, and gotten stronger, well, maybe you just need more time. If it hasn't shown the physiologic uh, improvement that you were hoping for, you may want to go back to the drawing boards, change your course, and or, or get another uh, reevaluation. So that's how I use the evaluate excuse, the uh, P three hundred uh, analysis, and uh, hopefully you got a pretty good idea as to uh, the basis of the more uh, recent advances in EEG technology. Thank you.